Hello there, I'm Alex from the Skills Team. This video is an extract from my introduction to the Key Skills at Studying at University workshop, delivered live to an audience of students on the 22nd of September 2020. In this extract, I detail advice and guidance to support you in developing the crucial skills of independent learning and self-motivation. If you would like to attend one of our workshops live, then go to our Enhance Your Learning Workshops calendar linked in the description of this video and register for an event. Self-motivation and independent learning, some of the most key skills for university, especially university now that we're all studying online, at least partly. So self-motivating yourself is really key because especially the difference between A-level and university for those who've taken that path. At university, you're expected to motivate yourself a lot more and in different ways and also to learn by yourself and research with it less help than you might have had beforehand. So what I'm going to be talking about is mainly ways of beating procrastination and ways that you can help yourself focus. I'll also be talking about the importance of taking breaks in helping yourself stay motivated. And then finally, I'll talk about some tips and advice that we have for motivation. And as well, if you've got any advice for any of these things, feel free to write it into the chat because Little. everyone has their own ways of doing this. And it's just about finding your own ways and reflecting on what happens each year uh, well, not each year, even each semester, and thinking about how can I improve what I have done for the next semester and become even better. But first, a beating procrastination. I'm sure all of you know what procrastination is, so I won't go into what it is. But what I will say is that at university, it can be really easy to procrastinate, especially when you're on your own in your in your room and there's no one around you to see if you're even studying. However, that's why I've tried to think about ways that I have tried to beat procrastination for myself, as well as also look at some ways that students have, and from I've taken these uh, this advice from the podcast that we've done on it. So, the first and most important thing I think about beating procrastination is actually knowing what to do. If you wake up in the morning and say, "Today I'm going to work towards beating my assessment and completing it and submitting it," well, that's a very generic goal and actually you don't necessarily know what steps to take towards that goal and just thinking I'm going to work towards my assessment that doesn't actually tell you what to do so what I would advise is try and break your what you're doing down into something smaller and more achievable think about something that you could achieve or work towards achieving on a day-to-day -day basis so by trying to have something that's smaller and achievable that can really help with beating procrastination Something which, if getting organised gets chosen, which by the looks of the last poll, it probably won't, uh, I was going to discuss in that one, is using an app, a task manager app like To Do or the tasks part of Outlook to set yourself tasks digitally and set yourself deadlines for those and try and work towards them. Tim, you have something to add. Yeah, I think it's really important to add that uh, a lot of people stare at the uh, word counts, for example, um, and they go, oh, no, I've got to write 2,000 words or 3,000 or 5,000 or whatever it is. And that's actually stopping you right because you mm -hmm. think you've got to write all those words. You don't know how to do it. It's way better, like Alex says, to break it down in smaller steps. So if you think about it, when you get a deadline uh, six weeks away and it's for a 3,000-word essay and you write a paragraph of about 100 words each day, you'll have reached that target in 30 days. So you can actually calculate for yourself how to do that. Um, and one of the biggest threats to any student is keeping stuff till the last day and then having to write 3,000 words because then it becomes really frustrating. So breaking mm -hmm. down your work is really uh, useful. It's a small and often approach. How many times have any of you climbed up a big hill or a mountain? And by just walking up a small part of it, you'll then loop back down eventually after doing a small part after small part and you'll realise you've climbed a huge insurmountable object. It's the same with essays. If you just keep doing small bits and pieces here and there, eventually you'll get there. Whereas if you stop and think, oh, that's a lot to do or I don't feel like doing it, all of a sudden the amount you have to do each day will increase. And although you can write 3,000 words on the day of the deadline, you're probably not going to write your best 3,000 words or have had the chance to reflect on it. So start early and try to have clear, focused and achievable goals. So that's the first piece of advice that I have for beating procrastination. And I feel like with everything I've done, that is one of the key things I have said and the key things that's helped me to beat it myself. 
The second thing is actually having a solid space to work in. And when you're working from home, that is actually even more crucial because you won't necessarily always have access to the study desks and the lecture spaces that you would have had in the past. But what you can do is to set up yourself somewhere where you can work, try and find a quiet space where you won't get distracted by things. So for example, for me, I do my studying in my bedroom, I have my door shut, everything that I would usually get distracted by, I try to take my, away from myself. So in the past, my desk in my bedroom used to have my games console on it. Now my games console is locked away and put into small pieces. So the effort it would take me to put it together, by the time I was, would be putting it together, I would then think actually I should be doing my work. So I try to create barriers to myself procrastinating within the spaces that I have. So for example, my phone is nowhere near me and my desk has everything that I need within arm's reach. So that's the second part of setting up the space. It actually try to make it so that you don't have a need to procrastinate and get up. Do take breaks to help you get up and I'll cover that in a second, but try to avoid and eradicate the need to take procrastination breaks. So for example, within arm's reach of me, I have pens, paper, I have my highlighters, I've got my water, and I've got everything I need to study all within arm's reach without having to get up. If I wanted to get something and I didn't have it nearby, that would be an invitation for me to procrastinate. So before you start work, try and get everything you need all within a, a circle of you to help you reach it. And that can again help you to stop finding excuses or ways to become distracted. And music as well can either help or hinder with distraction. It depends on what you personally find. So I find that listening to music without words, that can help me with studying. But music with words or music where I'm listening to something like Spotify, which has adverts, that can distract me because then I'd end up procrastinating every 15 minutes or so when it came on. So that is set up in a space. So create a space around you, either virtual music or physical with your desk and having everything that you need nearby and everything that you don't need away. So the next piece of advice that I have is to think about when you're actually the most productive. So Sally just said in the chat, she said full-time working at the same time as part-time top up to a very similar situation to what I'm in, uh, although I'm doing a part-time master's along with a full-time job. Um, any tips for that? Uh, and I think this next tip links in quite well to that, which is about finding when you're the most productive and trying to base studying time around that. So for me, I study best in the morning. And so what I will do is I will actually wake up early before work often and I will study then. But yeah, find the time when you work best and try and study to it. So either wake up early or do it or do studying late. Uh, for studying part time, um, I would again recommend blocking out a period of time and working out what time you need to, to study and planning that into your schedule. Don't plan it in too inflexibly. Try and find the time when you can. Um, but having a schedule and a routine helps me. So yeah, all these tips apply to both part-time and full-time students, but those specifically did apply quite well to part-time. Again, something which we've just discussed on the past was uh, taking small steps towards your goal. So by taking small steps, like we've just said, and doing little or often, that can help you to keep going and beat procrastination. But the final piece of advice that we've got on this slide about beating procrastination is to use a variety of learning methods. So it can be quite easy to procrastinate if your entire day is going to be spent just reading. Like you can probably do a few hours of reading, but if you are just doing reading for a full day, you might not be as productive as if you did part of a day reading, part of a day writing, um, and part of a day revising, for example, and using different methods. So try to find methods that work for you, but also don't be afraid of mixing up the methods, because that can again help keep revision a little bit more fresh and a little bit more interesting. So taking breaks is really, really important. And if you haven't time managed very well and you are very, very busy and have a lot to do, you might be tempted to avoid taking breaks. However, if you don't take breaks, you can actually end up burning yourself out. So I would always recommend finding ways of taking breaks and planning breaks into your study. So blocking your time in your day where you say, actually, at this time, I will stop. And having a time break of 15 minutes in the morning, every hour, for example, and having breaks at different times in the day that are slightly longer, that could also help you with working and beating procrastination. 
Breaks are really, really important though. So do make sure you do take them because they can help you keep motivated, they can help you keep fresh and they can help you keep on top of things. Breaks can be a reward. I have just read in the chat that someone said that they think about food when they think about rewards. That's something I've done in the past. Sometimes you can go for a walk instead or you could just watch a video if you really wanted to. But what I would say is I would try and reflect what you're taking a break with as something is the opposite of what you're doing. So at the moment, we're living in a very digital screen based world. And I would advise if you are taking a break, try to avoid using your screens. So, for example, in the past, if I was in a lecture, I might want to watch a video on my phone. Well, if I'm using a computer all the time, I actually think, let's not use a screen. Let's go for a walk. Let's just sit down somewhere else and do something different. You can actually use breaks in a productive way if you are really busy. So I remember when we did a podcast about this, Naomi was talking about how she would actually use washing up as a break. Social media breaks, I would agree to avoid them because you can just, if you're watching YouTube like I used to, you can end up just watching multiple videos and when you just don't stop and then you find it's been a few hours. So trying to avoid screens can also help to limit the breaks. So just to summarise, really, uh, plan breaks into your calendar, plan breaks into your day and work out when they should be and how long for. Try to vary the length of them so that they don't feel samey and so you can do different things in them. Don't be afraid of doing breaks where you're actually like waving productive in your breaks so you can go do the washing, you can cook yourself lunch and they can be a break, especially a break from a screen. Make sure you stick to the breaks, so stick to when they start, stick to when they finish. Um, but don't worry about not being too flexible, but try to use them to motivate yourself to get back to work if you do need to. The key is to find a way that works for yourself. Um, and what I recommend with taking breaks is to reflect after an assignment, have these breaks worked? Is there a better way of doing them? And can I improve in the future? Absolutely. Finally, we're going to talk about motivation very quickly. Motivation can help you to, again, beat procrastination and stay focused and is especially important now you're going to be studying on your own. So work out your why. Work out why you want to be studying. Work out why you are doing what you're doing. However, don't just think about the long term. Think that might not help you in the short term. Try and think about what, why you're doing what you're doing in the short term and try and find rewards in the short term. So Thinking about a degree and a job four years down the line might not help you out with your first assessments. So try and think about how you can reward yourself for doing what you're doing. Try and think about how you can, for example, take breaks and try to use different tasks, for example, to help motivate yourself. Creating goals can really help with motivation, but try to make them short, medium and long term and try to also make them achievable. Another thing about motivation, another thing that is, again, crucial to university is when you get feedback, a lot of people see feedback as a negative thing, um, especially if they get a bad mark. They can see feedback as a negative thing, but actually use it as an opportunity and a chance to improve because every time you get feedback, it's a way to motivate yourself. Actually, these are the things that I can do. And if I do these things, I'll be getting the grades I want. And always view feedback as a positive thing. Otherwise, you'll stay just as you are and you'll continue making the mistakes that you've made. And the final thing is just, again, the little and often approach can help to keep you motivated. Naomi said in the podcast that we did about this. If you start off thinking, maybe I'll do 10 minutes here, you might actually end up spending an hour doing it because you get find a way of creating momentum. So just to have a look in, t in the chat to see if anyone's written anything about advice for beating procrastination. I've seen reward have, yourself. Yes, um, yep, advice about own. rewards, understanding the good and the bad time, your own good and bad times to work. Um, I'm very keen on that. If I'm going to achieve things, it's generally in the mornings. Um, she says in an afternoon session. That's why I'm not talking too much. Um, but knowing <laughs> what times you work best can really help you to plan your more um the tasks where you need to focus more in the times that you work best um and we also had a lovely explanation um on the pomodoro technique um which i also did just google and put into um wikipedia which is about taking a working for 25 minutes and then having a short break and then going back and working for another 25 minutes 
Thank you for watching this extract from our workshop. I hope that you found it useful. If you are interested in learning further about this topic, I've added some useful links into the description of this video. There is also a link to our calendar of upcoming workshops in the description. If you want to see our workshops live, then you can use this calendar to find and register for events that you're interested in. Thank you again for watching.